Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment here for NFL Week 10 Picks and Predictions, where last week we struggled. It was a difficult week, especially against the spread. I started off this year so hot, I was making all the money in the world. I should have pulled out when I had the chance. I went 1-5 last week for my guarantees for my spread picks last week. Now, we're still 27, 21-2 on the year, so we're still in the green. We're not in the red. We're still in the black. We're still doing well. But we cannot afford another week like last week. Oh, my bank account is hurting right now. But it's all right, because I think we're going to have better luck this week. We had some big upsets last week where we saw the Green Bay Packers get their ass kicked by the Chargers. The Patriots get their ass kicked by the Ravens. There were some shocking results last week that I bet against. But this week, I think we're going to have better success. And I also went 8-6 and six a straight up, so we'll take that record. We'll do a little bit better, but we'll take that record. So let's go ahead and begin with tonight's Thursday night football game as we have the L.A. Chargers traveling to Oakland, taking on the Oakland Raiders. Now, honestly, I really don't care about my straight-up record, so I feel comfortable actually taking a risk here because I understand that the Raiders, they haven't been home for a while until last week where they were finally home again for the first time since, like, week one or week two, and this is a good opportunity for them to build a nice win streak at home. But the Chargers appear to maybe be finding something out, to maybe be improving. That was such an impressive victory last week over the now 7-2 Green Bay Packers. They were 7-1 at the time. I don't want to face the Chargers right now, even on a Thursday, even in my home stadium. I think the Raiders may return the favor later on. But for this matchup, go ahead and give me the Chargers to go to Oakland and defeat the Oakland Raiders. Now, I don't have any faith in either one of these teams, to be quite honest with you, on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, but for some reason, I just have an inkling. I have a feeling, okay? I got a feeling that the Chargers are going to get this done tonight. So go ahead and give me the Chargers to win this one. All right, next game, we have the Kansas City Chiefs at the Tennessee Titans. And, oh, boy. Uh, actually, I do think this is going to be a competitive game. It will still be a loss indeed, but it's going to be a competitive game because the Tennessee Titans, if anything else, they can normally uh, play up or down to their competition. And they have shown in the past, like now three seasons, that if a team like New England is coming to town or Green Bay is coming to town, that they can show up and win the damn game. Now, I don't think they're good enough to win this game. I, I still don't believe that. But I do think they're good enough to compete. I think they're going to put up points against the Kansas City Chiefs. I think their offense will it, – it, it's, it's, it's going to score enough points. I think this will quell some of the hatred we'll have for Arthur Smith. But ultimately, it will be a Kansas City win because Patrick Mahomes is back, and I trust he and Andy Reid to get it done more so than I trust Mike Vrabel and Ryan Tannehill to get it done. So give me the Kansas City Chiefs to win this one. Next, give me the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Ravens appear to be legit. Now, we still don't understand why they lost to the Cleveland Browns. That's something that still doesn't make any sense to us, especially in Baltimore. This makes no sense to us. However, okay, now they're traveling to Cincinnati, where Cincinnati may actually be headed for the number one pick. I mean, here we were thinking, believing that Cincinnati was going to end up winning a game and that Miami was going to you know, possibly lose out or worst case scenario, go 1-15 and get the number one pick. But more and more, hey, Cincinnati may get that number one pick and now A.J. Green is likely to be out for this game and not only this game, but he's out indefinitely. And I, th I think I just read that headline like an hour ago. Yeah, he's out indefinitely. So the Bengals might go winless. Okay, and now they're hosting the Baltimore Ravens who are coming off such a great victory against New England Patriots. They got to go the Baltimore Ravens to win this game, even in Cincinnati. All right, next game, we have the New York Giants at the New York Jets. So New York on New York crime rivalry going on here. Both these teams stink. So the only rivalry right now in New York is who can stink more. And the answer is definitively, well, maybe not definitively, but at least to me, is the New York Jets who stink. I mean, and we still don't understand how. They defeated the Dallas Cowboys three or four weeks ago. I mean, this is still a mystery to us. I mean, I'm trying to get the Scooby-Doo gang on this, right? Can we unmask 
who the Dallas Cowboys were on that evening or that day because I don't know who they were. They obviously were not the team that lost to this New York Jets team because no one's losing to this New York Jets team. Even the Miami Dolphins defeated this New York Jets team. This is ridiculous. So if the Giants don't have to go anywhere. This is a road game. They're not going anywhere. It's a neutral field. Who's going to win this neutral field? you got to pick the better team on a neutral field. And right now, that is the Giants who have their issues. Okay, and as I have them going 5-11 this season, I think that's the mark that they're going to hit. But the Jets have more issues right now. Adam Gay stinks. And this should be a victory for the New York football Giants. All right, next game, we have the Carolina Panthers at the Green Bay Packers. And I have my eyebrow raised here. Because every season we see teams that start out hot and fade late and even miss the playoffs, even starting as well. Well, maybe not starting as well as 7-1, but even as well as 6-0, we've seen teams crash down to, like, Broncos. I want to say Broncos were 6-0 with Kyle Horton, finish 8-8. Eight eight. Like, I really want to say that was their record. So, and that was, like, 2010. So, oh, not 2010. That was been 2008 or nine. So, I have my eyebrow raised here. Okay, I think this could be quite interesting because the Packers really looked bad last week. And they're facing a, a Carolina team here that has a very similar play style to the L.A. Chargers right now. In fact, did the L.A. Chargers a little bit improve worse at the quarterback position, but a better running game, a better receiving back. They, they have like the mixture of Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler at their running back position in Carolina. The better defense. I have my eyebrow raised here. Now, I'm going to pick the Packers to win there at home. But the Panthers coming off a loss is very dangerous. And I remember they beat, I want to say, the Houston Texans in a, in a game similar to this. So I have my eyebrow raised here. I think this is going to be a close game. People do not sleep on this game. But give me the Carolina Panthers to win this one. All right, next game here are the Arizona Cardinals at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Bucs can put up points. The Bucs can compete. The Bucs are going to be in almost... Every game this year, unless if Jameis Winston decides to throw five interceptions, and this is a very possible thing. This is a very real possible thing. This is an interesting game, as the Cardinals are coming off of a lot of rest, coming off what will be 10 days rest they played last Thursday. They're going to be well-rested, ready to score points against this horrible Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. It's going to be close, and it's going to be fun to watch. And Jameis Winston may throw them the game, and that's something you always have to look out for. But I feel like the Buccaneers are, you know, they got to win a game here. Yeah, look, they, they beat the Rams, at least in L.A. Like, they, they're winning some games. This year. They're probably not going to lose out. This is a game that they should win. So go ahead and give me the Bucs to win this one in a very close fashion. But I think this one goes either way. I do think it's a toss-up. But go ahead and give me the Tampa Buccaneers to win this one. Next, give me the Atlanta Falcons at the New Orleans Saints, where we expect Matt Ryan to replace the other poor Matt. Uh, Matt Schaub, and Matt Ryan is not poor, but Matt Schaub definitely is. I can't believe he's still in the league. It's incredible. Uh, so, I think this is going to be closer than a lot of people think it will. And you're going to see that on my guarantee tees, where these are two teams that normally play each other very close. And look, the Falcons can still put up points, man. I know the Saints defense is great. I mean, right now, I want to come out with midseason predictions if I have time, and I should have time this weekend. I think the Saints might be headed for a Super Bowl, especially with Drew Brees back and playing as well as he is, like nothing happened, at least in the one game he played. So I love the Saints right now, but I think this is going to be a close game. A lot of people expect, give me the Falcons to lose. <laughs> but um, I think it's going to be a little closer. I have it as a 13-point game, but I think this will be a late touchdown by the Saints. I think it's going to be a one-possession game for most of the game. That's what I believe. All right, next game we have the Detroit Lions at the Chicago Bears, and this is a toss-up to me where the Chicago Bears are not playing well right now. Uh, their offense is awful. It stinks. And the Detroit Lions, they're, they're not playing much better. Um, so, and look, you guys knew I was on the Detroit Lions, but I'm off the Detroit Lions. And I told you they're going to lose last week, and they lost. The Lions may go out and beat Chicago in Chicago. I wouldn't be shocked, but I feel like this is a nice opportunity for Trubisky to have some success against this porous Detroit Lions defense right now That where their defensive front is the only good thing, the only positive thing about them. That's currently the case. So go ahead and give me the Chicago Bears to win this one, but it's a toss-up. Make no doubt about it, people. I wouldn't bet on this. This game is a toss-up, 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 but the Lions have been in a close game every single week. I wouldn't trust it. All right, next game, we have the Buffalo Bills at the Cleveland Browns. And, okay, the Browns just stink. All right, that's it. It's over. And they don't have – well, you know, I thought they were going to – I thought they were going to start this season 2-5 and five or 3-4. and four. That was one of my bold predictions. 
But along that bold prediction, I thought they are going to catch fire and catch hot. With the loss of the Broncos, I think it's over. I think they're too deflated. I think anyone mentally can come back from two and five, but two and six, it's over. I, I feel like I feel like there's a huge difference between two and five and two and six. Two and five, hey, we can win eight of our next nine and make the playoffs. But now you have to win eight of your next eight. Ah, after that, everyone's gonna be like, ah, season's over. Season's over. And at least you can get the ball rolling. Even when you're two and five, maybe you don't believe. You can really, you know, win eight of your next line, but you win a game against the Broncos, and then you host the Bills, and then you host the Seahawks, I want to say, and then you win some games, and all of a sudden you get confidence and you get rolling. But I think with that loss to the Broncos, eh, that's it. They stink. The Browns just stink. The Bills are probably going to be a playoff team. It depends if the Steelers keep winning games, and it looks like they're going to keep winning games. And I don't trust the Raiders. I think the Raiders are the best 8 8. So the Bills should be headed for the playoffs, and a playoff team should be able to get it done against Cleveland right now. So going to give me the Bills to win this one. But again, it just scares me because we saw this Cleveland Browns team lose to the Baltimore Ravens. So I I, I don't know. Oh, no, it's hard not lose the Baltimore Ravens. Defeat the Baltimore Ravens. Blow out the Baltimore Ravens. Dominate the Baltimore Ravens. So maybe it's, you know, time for them to show up again, but I got to see it to believe it. Next game, we have the Miami Dolphins traveling to Indianapolis, taking on the Indianapolis Colts. And I understand the Colts lost last week right to Pittsburgh, and the Dolphins won. And this might give you some cause for pause, some indication, some belief. And by the way, the Jacoby Brissett might be out for this game, so that's also some more indication that the Colts might lose this game. So I have my eyebrow raised when it comes to the spread of this game. But this is still the game that a coach should win, even with Brian Hoyer. That's right. That is their backup quarterback. Even with Brian Hoyer at the helm, I, I feel comfortable on the Indianapolis Colts. And by the way, that just goes to show how I think Jacoby Brissett is overrated. I'm sorry. I know he made that great, you know, sideline throw to T.Y. Hilton. But we saw Brian Hoyer come to the game for the Indianapolis Colts, have success offensively, move the ball against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense right now, which is playing incredible, especially in the turnovers that they're creating. So... I think, again, you're going to see that, ah, uh, no, Frank Wright just has a great system. I don't think it's going to be Brissett is that good. And I think I think they know that. I think they're going to move on from Brissett after this two-year deal and maybe even this year. Uh, maybe not move on from him, but he won't be starting next year. We'll see. We'll see. For this game, uh, I do have the Colts winning this game. Uh, obviously, the Miami Dolphins, they still stay. Don't let last uh, win last week's win against the New York Jets fool you. They're not going to go and defeat the Indianapolis Colts to me. All right, next game, we have the L.A. Rams at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have my eyebrow raised. Where the Pittsburgh Steelers have been winning games lately. They've won four of their last five football games. They've defeated the Indianapolis Colts. They almost, well, at least I won't say they almost lost to the Dolphins, but they were down early against the Dolphins, came back and had a, what ended up being a convincing victory, I'd say. At least, yeah, decently convincing. They've done all right. However, unfortunately for them, the Rams are coming off of a bye. And I like Sean McVay off of a bye. I feel like off of a bye, he's able to, you know, set up his team. Well, I don't know what his record is off of a bye off the top of my head. He's only been coaching for three years. This is his third year. So I can't tell you if he's one and one or two and two or whatever on the bye. I don't know. But I feel like he's going to be one of those coaches in this league that's good off of a bye. For that reason, that reason alone, I'm going to pick the Rams here. If the Rams were not coming off a bye, I'd pick the Steelers, honestly. Because I just love what Mike Tomlin's doing. And this just proves again, people, and we should already know this. This shouldn't be a shock to us. But coaching in this league matters. I mean, look at the Colts without Andrew Luck. Look at the Steelers without Big Ben. Still better than the Tennessee Titans. Still better than the Tennessee Titans. Okay, why is this? Why? I mean, just, just, just think about it. With the worst backup quarterbacks, because Mason Rudolph is worse than Ryan Tannehill, and uh, Jacoby Brissett, to me, honestly, is worse than Ryan Tannehill, and we can have that debate. But whatever. I'll have that debate with you, honestly. I really will have that debate. Anyway, but for this game, Pittsburgh will compete again because Mike Tomlin, man, he's just getting the most out of his team, and it's really a great job to watch over in Pittsburgh. He has to keep his job. I mean, I know it's frustrating you did not win with the Killer Bees, but look, Antonio Clown, <laughs> look at this look at this clown. I can't blame you for losing to this clown. And is Le'Veon Bell doing anything over there in uh, New York? Is he doing anything? He's doing okay. He's not doing great. Maybe they weren't that good. Maybe they weren't getting the most out of Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Maybe they kept their personalities in check for as long as they could have been kept in check. 
Give me the LA Rams to win that one. All right, next game we have the my the Minnesota Vikings at the Dallas Cowboys, and we have an upset alert here, people. Where? I believe the Minnesota Vikings are a better team than the Dallas Cowboys. And this is coming from a guy, a man, a boy maybe. I don't know. I want to still believe I'm young, but I'm 23. Damn it, I'm getting old. The Minnesota Vikings. Although I had the Dallas Cowboys winning the Super Bowl, the Minnesota Vikings have just as good as a run game, if not better right now. It's debatable, though, because the Vikings don't have a backup worth a damn, whereas at least that's playing. And the Cowboys do in Tony Pollard. But they're just as good as a run game. Quarterback plays about equal. Offensive line is worse, without a doubt. Defense, Vikings is better. Now, the only question is, can Kirk Cousins on national television get it done? That is the question. And that's a question. I will grant it. And I don't think he's great on prime time. Don't get me wrong. And if you're giving me 10 prime time games for Kirk Cousins, I'm only going to pick him to win two or three of them. But this is going to be one of those two or three where he faces a Cowboys team that can beat up on some bad teams. But when they get punched in the mouth by a physical football team, oh, they have their troubles. And there's a tough physical football team coming to town. And I know the Vikings got killed by the Philadelphia Eagles a couple weeks ago. That was an early game in Philadelphia. But they're going to be ready for this game, anchor for this game, ready for this game, trying to prove a point, facing Dallas, hopefully feeling this healthy. Need Adam Thielen to be healthy. And by the way, if he's not healthy, forget it, I'm picking the Cowboys. If he is, give me the Minnesota Vikings to go to Dallas and get it done to keep the Dallas Cowboys here. And then finally, we have the uh, – no, that is not the right card. Finally, we have the Seattle Seahawks at the San Francisco 49ers. And look, guys, the 49ers are just good. I mean, that's just it. They're just good. And I know last week's game might have been closer than you would have liked against the Cardinals. But, you know, it was a Thursday game on the road. Give them some slack. Give them some credit. The 49ers are a two Super Bowl contender, man. And the Seahawks are a little flawed. I mean, look, they competed. It was a 40-34 overtime game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Seattle. And they've been a better road team this year. I understand that the Seahawks have. But that's concerning. Where the 49ers have been dominating, folks. They sucked in the Carolina Panthers. It's a good football team and killed them. Killed them. This is the 49ers' time to shine. They know that. They're prepping the whole week for that. Their team's going to be so amped, so ready to go. Oh, my goodness. This is the game for the 49ers over the past five years. This is the game for them. They're going to come out ready to go, ready to roll. Give me the San Francisco 49ers to win this game comfortably. I really like the 49ers this upcoming Monday night. I didn't miss a game, did I? I feel like I did. Apparently not. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. So we're going to move on to my guarantee tees of the week. These are my betting picks of the week. Where again, last week we were 1-5. and five. Ridiculous. But this week we're going to do much better. Hopefully my bank account can't take it. All right, so let's start with the Bills plus three. I think they're going to beat the Browns. The Browns stink. And maybe that Browns team that beat the Baltimore Ravens, maybe it shows up. But maybe. But I'm not betting on that. You're betting on that? I'm not betting on that. I'm betting against that. I feel like that's a good bet to me. And their, their moves are down in the doldrums. They want to give up. They, they don't have the character to come back from this. They, they're ready for Freddie Kitch to be fired and to move on to 2020. Uh, honestly, that's what they're ready for. So give me the Bills plus three. Give me the Cardinals plus four and a half. Although I do have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning the game. Again, I think it's a 50-50. And in any 50-50 game, you give me four and a half points. Oh, I'm going to take those points. Give me the Cardinals plus four and a half. Coming off 10 days rest. Well, it will be 10 days rest. Yeah, the Atlanta Falcons plus 13 and a half. I mean, I know the Saints have had some great victories, some very sound victories, some blowout victories this season, and they're probably going to have more coming. I understand that. Don't get me wrong. However, this is a Falcons and Saints rivalry that has a lot of score close games in its history, in its recent history, and it's a long getting history in the history of Drew Brees and Matt Ryan. They have some contests. They have some battles. Even when the Falcons are having poor seasons, even when the Saints are having only mediocre seasons, these matchups have been close historically, and I'm betting on that one more time here. If Matt Ryan and Julio Jones are healthy and playing for the Falcons, they're going to put up points against the New Orleans Saints. And then we have two over-unders this week. That's right, both over-unders. Let's first take the Carolina Panthers at Green Bay under 47. I think, right now, I think I have it scheduled for 44, but 
I don't think either one of these teams puts up 30. I, I think that's, yeah, I think that's, a, no, I don't think that's happening. The Panthers have a good defense. They get after the quarterback. And I, I think they're going to look at the tape and see what the Chargers did last week and, you know, try to resemble a lot of that. So look out for that for sure. Uh, definitely under 47 to me. And then Seattle at San Francisco over 47 because the 49ers no matter what are putting up points this season. And especially against the Seahawks defense, who is, which is struggling, which, which get let up 34 last week to the Ted Bay Buccaneers. A good offense, don't get me wrong. But still, hey, give me this over 47. This should be one of the more high-scoring matchups of the week. I'll make money on that one. So there you go. Those are my NFL Week 10 picks and predictions. What are yours? Comment down below. I want to know if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. Until next time. This has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. See you all later.